Hello everyone, welcome to the series where we are discussing data warehouse practical. This is third lecture. My name is Professor Tiruk Parmar. In previous two lectures, we are already done configuring listener as well as creating a database. In this particular lecture, we'll continue our discussion where we'll configure repository and workspace. So let's start with configuring repository and workspace. Now, before, uh, before we start with this particular lecture, we have already talked about OWB system that is Oracle Warehouse Builder System Schema that is created for us automatically during the Oracle 11G installation. And we have also looked at unlocking it and assigning a password to it. However, if we were to connect to the database right now as that user, we would find that as yet only a couple of objects exist in that schema. Filling out that schema is the, uh, what will be done during this final installation step. So we are going to fill some more objects in that particular schema which we have created during creating a database in a previous particular practice. practical. So we are going to use the repository assistant application to configure the repository, create a workspace and create the object in the repository that are needed for Oracle Warehouse Builder to run. The Oracle Warehouse Builder sch uh, system schema is where the warehouse builder will store those objects. The repository assistant application is available from start menu under the warehouse builder. As you can see here, so we have to go to Oracle 11G and then we have to find one option that is repository assistant. Once we click on it, we'll find this type of a screen. As you can see here we have two options so um, as soon as we click on repository application on the server that means right now this machine is only my server because I have installed both the both uh, basically we are doing it for practical purpose only so client and server is going to be single machine only so the first step is going to ask us for its database connection information that is host name, port number, oracle service name as you can see and as well as sql.net connection as well. Now sql.net is oracle's networking capability for communicating with database in a distributed network environment. A naming method is configured so that when using a net service name sql.net will now uh, know what connection information to use for the connection. We have not configured a naming method since we don't really need it just to connect locally. So we'll use the host name, port number and Oracle service name option. So first thing, as you can see, the host name is the name assigned to computer on which we have installed the database and we can just leave it at localhost since we are running it on a computer that has the database installed. Port number is the one we assigned to the listener back when we installed it. It defaults to the standard 1521. This is example. Remember by default it is 1521 only. In third step, we'll install Oracle service name. Remember we'll enter the name we assigned to our database during step 3 of our database creation process. I hope it is clear. So as you can see, I'm going to enter the database name which I have entered during creating a database that is DW, and click on next. So as soon as we click on next, we'll find now that we have determined the connection information for our database, we'll move along to step two to repository assistant. It takes us what option we'd like, we would like to perform on the following way that is manage warehouse builder. Then manage warehouse builder workspace user, add display language to repository and register a real application cluster. So as you, as you can see, make it first option and click on next. As soon as we click on next, we'll find create new warehouse builder option. Now for this particular part, we'll make this option as it is only that is create a new work. Uh, workspace or drop an existing one. We'll select the first option as it is. Then it gives us a following option that it uh, gives us an option like create a warehouse with a new user as a 
workspace owner which is to specify an owner for the workspace we are presented with two option to create a new user or to use an existing user as the owner to perform the first option will uh, we will need to specify a database user who has database administrator level privileges that are required to be able to create a new user in the database the second option is to specify the second option is to specify an existing database user to become the owner of the workspace this user must have oracle warehouse builder user role assigned to be able to successfully designate it as a workspace owner that is a database role required uh, required of any user who is to use the work, uh, warehouse builder if the existing user who is selected does not have that role then it must be assigned to the user an additional step will be required to specify another user who is the who has the ability to do that assign or grant the role of database administrator but for our practical we are not going to go for those additional step we'll just perform a single step where we are going to create a new user so as you can see choose one option and click on next as soon as we click on next we'll find an option which gives us to create a new user as you can see in this particular step this step will depends on which option we have specified in step 4 if we are uh, if we are creating a new user it will ask us for an existing user with dba privileges in a database dba means database administrator level privileges the system account is the default provided there but if we have a different account that is a dba in the database we can use that as well if we have specified an existing user in step 4 then step 5 will ask us for the username and password for that user as well as the name of new workspace to create but here we are using since we are specifying a new user we will put the password for this particular system account and click on next so my password here is oracle i have already told that make password common only for rest all other things which we are going to perform on this particular practical so our password is oracle only and click on next as soon as we click on next we'll find a option like this as you can see which uh, basically it is step 6 as you can see <clears throat> it is for selecting optional features of owb warehouse or oracle warehouse builder for the purpose of this topic only the first option is required the database integrator enterprise edition uh, will find some new option but we are not concerned with new release we are just going to uh, see here as you can see will need uh, we need to enter first is workspace owners username that is i have created a username with basit underscore user then workspace users password so we'll put it oracle only keep it simple and again confirm password that is oracle only and then we'll assign a workspace name that is make it similar only that is bacit underscore workspace that is ws that's it so as you can see i have entered username who can access repository and who can work on it then password and last uh, in last will use bacit workspace name and then click on next as soon as we come to step 7 as you can see this particular st uh, step ask us the new username's password and workspace name so the username is owb system that is oracle warehouse builder system and the password for this now we have already unlocked this particular account while performing a uh, previous practical that is creating database we have already unlocked this particular account and we have assigned password for this particular account as oracle only so we'll enter the same password here as well so the password is oracle now in step 8 as you can see this step will ask us for a password of owb system users um <clears throat> sorry as we are done with owb system password then it ask us for some different details basically a table space is a logical entity in oracle database for storing data all objects created are assigned to a table space which stores the data physically in a data file or data file assigned to the table space 
the administration of table space in an oracle database is more more than we have room for here so we do uh, we won't be creating any new table space to hold owb system data will just leave the default selected the user table space for data index make it as it is here as well and for advanced production database it would be a good idea at a minimum to specify a separate table space but for but in our case will make it similar only so table space snapshot here also will use user only and now it ask us to select a language so this step is to select a base language basically for a repository so we'll make the appropriate selection once the repository is created we cannot change the base language and there can only be one base language assigned to the repository physical names of repository objects are assumed to be in a base language the repository assistant will automatically assign the base language depend, uh, depending on the local that is assigned to the computer we are installing on where we also have the option of selecting one or more languages as you can see we have option to select one or more languages or display languages that will allow user to assign a business name to physical object in their uh, own language unlike the base language we can assign display language after the repository is created select one of the language to apply to our repository workspace and click on next as soon as we click on next make it similar that is american english only which is by default selected and click on next as soon as we click on next it asks us like we are almost finished with our work the final step is a optional step to specify any workspace user as you can see here we can specify any workspace user uh, now for existing database user we specified the workspace owner as a new user earlier in a install process and now it's asking for an additional user who we might want to have access to the workspace the workspace owner is allowed to add and remove database users from the workspace removing a database user from the workspace does not delete that user account from oracle it only removes him or her as a valid user of a workspace after selecting any user the repository assistant will present us with a summary screen of the action it will take and the information we entered as shown in a following image we'll just show that uh, it will just display this particular image as you can see here so it is the summary that is host name port number which we have selected and few other details which uh, which we have selected basically so notice the name of the project towards the end as you can see here we have project name there was no option to specify that project name so it just using a default name it always sets up a default project in a new workspace by that name but we can change it later when we actually start designing our data warehouse and working with the workspace in a design center click on a finish button and it will begin installing uh installing and presenting us with a scroll bar after moving as you can see it start installing and we can see installation in a progress so last what i want to say is before this the very first time it runs it will take around 5 to 10 minutes to run before reporting to success pop up as it has to initialize the repository in a workspace uh, oracle workspace builder system schema creating new work workspace after the first time will be very quick taking no more than few seconds to complete so as you can see i have basically done it um uh, i have uh, created this particular video on a short while so i have skipped many part of this but when we are creating it for a first time it takes 5 to 10 minutes and if your computer is not that efficient then it might take 10 to 15 minutes or 20 minutes as well and at the end once we are done creating this particular repository we'll find this particular success message if success message is not there that means your practical is not performed very well and here we are done with creating our repository click on okay and we are done creating this particular part so we'll continue discussion in a next lecture thank you